live and we are live hi everybody welcome back for another week of movies music and mayhem i am your host rachel slowstry thank you for coming and hanging out with us uh this week is a really special guest and we don't have a lot of time with him because he's doing some crazy stuff in canada right now that he'll tell you all about but if you're a fan of supernatural you know exactly who he is uh it's new duck it's it's brennan it's i'm so excited to have you on hi <laughs> how you doing good how have you been Pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm working. I'm here in Kelowna, BC. If you know where that is? That's um, interior of British Columbia. It's actually a busier um, area now of BC of Canada. I don't, like because of the film industry is like not really happening in the United States. Thanks to um, the current pandemic situation, uh, Vancouver is getting a ton of business. Like it's so busy for film right now. It's insane. Yeah, like, I. Uh... Uh, working so it's great like I, like I already didn't want to move up to Vancouver and work there already no I'm like it's literally the only place to work in entertainment right now in North America yeah that's what I understand so yeah I mean uh, uh, Netflix just signed this big long-term big production house deal of like starting a bunch of shows up here Sandra Bullock is in town shooting some feature uh, so yeah it's uh what is it with austin like uh, people from austin just coming up to vancouver because like yeah she's from austin the boys are from austin like yeah they, they filmed psych up there with zach levi but uh yeah. speaking of the boys uh guys tonight i am drinking the win in honor of brennan i am drinking the winchester bourbon oh, yeah. um I, I actually had a version of this signed by jared who um, yeah. made me open it for him during an autograph signing at a convention. Uh, he, made you. he made you. He, I mean, you know him. He's yeah. a five-year-old, yeah. and if you don't do what he says, um, yeah. he will literally lift you over his head, which is terrifying, because that's like 19 feet tall. Um, <laughs> right. But, okay, so yeah. you have had such an incredibly, like, varied career, because, like, didn't your mom was a set dresser, right? Yeah, she... Um, well, she was more, she was art department. She started art department in commercials in the 90s. Um, and for those people who don't know, on film sets, commercial crews are generally just smaller, less crews, but they're people that wear more hats. So uh, all the, com the positions are combined into one. So she was like the art department all together. And uh, she became kind of like the commercial queen. She did all of the Mattel stuff in the 90s. So like most Barbie commercials, if you go back to like 90s nostalgic commercials, she uh, she did a lot of those uh, like Barbie and Power Wheels and and Dora the Explorer even when that started. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, so yeah, so I ended up being around set on set a lot. And then you ended up getting to work on what I think your first was your first credited uh like job on screen or behind the screen for Wicker Man. Yeah, yeah. Jesus so yeah, I, yeah, which is amazing. Um, I'm so proud to have worked on that. Um, that it's a really good movie. It's 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 a great cult classic. It's uh, it's hilarious. Uh, it looks great. It's epic. It does. It's really it does. Um, the sound. Um, but no, it was. Uh, yeah, I didn't know what that would movie would turn out to be of course to have if you you know google nick nicholas cage losing his shit that <laughs> and like go watch that video um like half of the stuff is from that movie because it's just bad shit crazy <laughs> and it's also just nick cage being nick cage it's actually yeah. really nick cage yeah. being his like nick cagiest ever yeah. it's it's funny a few weeks ago i had uh brendan meyer who is another canadian actor who was in Color of Space with him. So I just, I completely didn't even realize that we just did like a double Canadian Brendan related yeah. second two steps away from Nick Cage conversations. I have a also weird connection to Brendan Meyer. Uh, I'm talking oh to Brendan Meyer. Of course you do. Yeah, I used to uh, take, well, we studied with the same teacher um, uh, back in, I don't know where he is. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Uh, where Where is he right now? Right now, um, I'm pretty sure he's with his family in Canada, like near Toronto, oh. I think. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, so back in the day when I was, before having an agent or whatever, I was looking for classes to, to audit, um, to check out. And I had looked at this one school and I, 
you had to like apply online and talk about like, why do you want to be an actor? Which is like, the <laughs> question ever to answer. It's just, it's just, I don't know, it's awkward. So anyways, I, you had to like apply and then I never heard back. I'm like, oh, okay, like I guess I'm not good enough to like for this school or whatever. When really what happened is like my, I guess there was like a changeover at that school and my email got lost. And out of the blue one day, I got an email accidentally to my email address. It was meant for Brendan Meyer being like, hey, Brandon, here's your scene. Like class starts on Monday. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. But no one's talked to me. I don't know what this is. And um, I called the school. I'm like, yeah, I just got this email by accident. And they're like, oh, uh, sorry about that. But I'm like, yeah, but I applied a while back and I never heard what's going on. And they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, like your email like straight up got lost. Like, do you want to come for an interview <laughs> tomorrow? Like, yeah, sure. And then I started the same class and then we were in the same class the following week. That's and really staying with that teacher for you know a decade and years. That's really funny because like Brandon actually, uh, Brandon's involved uh, in the movie trivia showdown with me, and it's basically like movie trivia meets uh, like professional wrestling with like the yeah. attitudes and the teams and stuff. It's really ridiculous and so much fun. But he yeah. is on a team called Shazam, and his nickname is Br his. He's Brendan the Kid Myers. It's so funny. Um, yeah, if you're ever in LA, let me know and uh, you can come by and check yeah. it out. It's so funny. We and we've got like a ton of people in the industry. Like we've got a, a, like three or four editors and a, oh. like a producer for Joel Silver and like it's just it's wow. it's nuts. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my my mom is in the chat um, oh. and she's requesting light in front of you, saying that you look like oh. you're in witness protection. Mom, it's yeah, fine. You can see. Him. I can. I can. <laughs> Let me see if I can turn on some more. I'm in a hotel room and I don't know where the lights are. Yeah. I never thought that I'd ever be jealous of somebody saying those words to me because as you know, I lived in hotels for like seven years straight right. basically. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm, be better. oh, it's perfect. Yeah, much better. Mom, are you happy? <laughs> you happy now, mom? <laughs> No, she's great. <laughs> she's actually more popular than I am. Actually, my my fans love her like way more. Like she pops in and literally like, look, Mama, everybody loves Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, okay, so you worked a lot on sets and you got to like mm -hmm. do set dressing. Uh, did you? What was the, what was the most important thing that you learned from doing all of that? Um. <clears throat> I would say, you know, before being an actor, is that sort of yeah. what you mean? Yeah. <clears throat> I would say one of the most important things is that I <clears throat> was part of the crew. So, and we all worked our asses off. So when it came time for me to be an actor and like, obviously when actors are like, you know, treated special or, you know, they they're guided around and like everything is geared towards them, which that's kind of how film works. Like the actors are, there's a lot of departments that take care of them and stuff. Um, but there's, you know, there's a reason for that. And, and obviously actors can get a little high and mighty after a while. And then they get demanding. And then, you know, obviously people are all afraid of like, don't look in, don't look them in the eye and like all that kind of thing. <laughs> and like um, you, you can, and you know, eventually, actors can get paid a lot and like, you know, they have an entourage and they just become like sort of a bigger entity and get sort of a, a bigger head about them. And the biggest thing I learned is like, I, I'm, I, I can't, I, it's not only do I not want to do that, but I can't do that because I've been part of the crew. So yeah. like I've been, I'm just, a, I feel like a cog in the machine. Like the film is being made. The actors are part of it. Uh, there's a lot of things that revolve around those people. Like there's not a bunch of people attending to set tech people or you know, whatever. Like it's the act of like, but it's only out of function. Yeah. And so because of that, I like, I respect everyone and I acknowledge people and I, I just, and I try to help where I can. And I, you know, I, I don't, I, I try to be involved in the process like that and respecting people who are on set. Cause we're all there to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, the second I start to like, I don't have to do that because I'm above that. Like that's, then I'm the douchebag that no one, how far is that 
How long is that going to last? Sure, yeah. they're active to do that and get away with it, sadly. But they also get know. millions and millions and millions of dollars. And yeah, you go. And I get it, but it's yeah. still stupid. <laughs> I, yeah, I just don't want to be like that. And the majority well, of actors that I work with are not like that. And well, I was just about to ask. I mean, speaking of divas on set, I mean, we all know that the boys have their antics. Like Jared and Jensen and Misha are all just like giant children in mm -hmm. men's bodies. Um, what was it like coming on set? Because it, you you did what you were your introduction was in season ten <clears throat> or eleven. Uh, eleven. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. And so, like, you are obviously like it's already one of the longest running sci-fi shows in American history. Like it already has this like that, like incredible fan base that, which is how we met. Um, so like, what was it like coming on to something that was basically like just a whole family and having to like play new Doug? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, uh, to be fair, it was, it, it more just felt at first when I was there, just felt like uh, uh, just a well-run set. Um, that that yeah, for like the the, the people that were new, they're doing like they they've been there a while, so like it, it was kind of a well-oiled machine, which felt um, good. Um, being on some of smaller films um, where people are newer, like you don't not only they it's not a long-running series, but like they just kind of cobbled these crews together of people and by the time the movie's over that's there's some chemistry and, but that that's it you know it's one and done but yeah so having a show like that that uh that everything's kind of well oiled and it did it felt what it felt like was being part of like this is how like it should be this is how being on set should be like this where everyone is working together and, and respectful and stuff and and uh it's cool to sort of yeah, to be a part of that and seeing, seeing from an acting standpoint of seeing like how efficient like Jensen and Jared are at at what they do. I mean, I, 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 it's insane. Like, you know, the show is so old that it was when they did twenty four episode seasons. Like that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, and then. Of course, it's just them, so they have all this dialogue. And like for me, I'm still, I still, I need to do like a tape and audition later tomorrow morning. And like, it takes me forever to like learn line. I just need a ton of time. And like they're learn, they're doing full hour long TV episodes every day. And then while they're shooting, they're learning for the next episode and. They don't really blow takes and like they kind of keep going. And then, well, the, well yeah. Don't okay. they? Yeah. <laughs> we've, all, we've all seen the gag reels. <laughs> no, the gag reels, no, sure. Uh, the, but yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do it. But like for the most part, if they, if they couldn't do it, then the, the show would never get made. Like it would be crazy, you know, it would be too much, but they do, they pull it off. But no, they have their gags down. They have their like, they're fucking around like, I've never seen a bill like down to the last minute, like, cause it's always like, okay, rolling, quiet on set, rolling, sound speed. And then like, oh, that, like slate comes in and then like, right. And then director says action and then it happens. But like leading up to that time, like right before the second that he calls action, they're fucking around. Yeah. And then <laughs> action and then it's, and then it's like this. Like, what's <laughs> Or he's shoving, or, or or he's shoving food in his mouth, or uh, yeah. peeling off a exactly. baby. Yeah, no, it was. I, I've been on set. Well, not on set, but like we used to call it set stalking, mm -hmm. um, because I mean everything. First of all, everything is shot in Vancouver. Like everything. Like one of my dearest friends in Vancouver lives in Steveston, which is where they shot all the exteriors for Once Upon a Time. Um, yeah. And like, they, I think they, uh, they filmed Mystery Spot there and they filmed like a whole bunch of other episodes like in different, um, Meat Suit was filmed in the bar like when uh, that like child is Jared and he's like sipping the pineapple or banana daiquiri at the bar. Like I had mm -hmm. a pineapple or a ba banana daiquiri at that bar because I was like, well, why the fuck not? Um, yeah. But like, it's so amazing to watch them work just because like <laughs> you do see that instant like click over. Mm -hmm. Like they will literally be like poking each other beneath like where the camera is shooting until they're like action. And then they just like snap into it. Um, yeah. It's, it's remarkable. And they'll, and 
and here I like, and they're being funny though. And like, <laughs> and I don't, I, I've, I'm pretty particular about like humor. Like I don't find like ev- everything, but they're, I found them both really funny and, and, and I'm trying to like stifle what I'm in. The camera's on me too. And like, mm-hmm. they're the like, guys, like, I am like, gotta dial it back. Cause like, yeah. I'm trying to, yeah. You can't let them know that you think that they're funny. Yeah. Because yeah. that's just adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. Uh, they were doing an external shoot one day and it was like a few days after the Vancouver convention and my mom had come up uh, to Vancouver to like, she'd never been there. And then like, we took this really beautiful like road trip back down to LA. Mm-hmm. Um, but she, we were, they were doing externals and Daniil was there. Like the wives were there, Daniil and Jen were there. And Daniil was like driving by in, uh, in like the black, SUV or whatever and Jensen's sitting in baby and we're sitting across the street and he rolls by and he's just like checking her out and my mom from across the street goes you are a married man <laughs> not knowing that it was Daniil and I was like mom oh, yeah. that's that's his wife and she goes oh yeah. good for you <laughs> yeah, yeah. and Jensen hears this all and just starts laughing I'm like that's why they're just like the nicest Ben in the world and I'm so glad yeah. I was so sad like that scene that you did with um with Brienne uh, after you got turned back from a vampire guys, this mm-hmm. is going to be a really weird group of conversations for the next like few minutes, just a heads up. Um, but like you got turned into a vampire, you got turned back and then you like had to break up with Donna and like, still it's one of my most like heart wrenching moments in the entire series. Cause it's just, it's so sad. I loved you guys together. Yeah. What was, what was it like working with Brie? <laughs> yeah. I love Brianna. She's, she's so awesome. And, and um, you know, it was, that was another sort of um, serendipitous thing that we clicked even because I booked uh, my, the original role for dog off of tape. Um, and uh, which is more common nowadays because no one's going to auditions. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but you know, we, and your cast is a romantic, this happens all the time. Like they don't have time to check to see if these people are going to be good together. Like we just, I just showed up. Yeah. And we start chatting and then like, we just got along really well. I had, I, I had felt like I kind of met her before cause I had the other episodes of her to watch as like sort of uh yeah, as like research yeah. to see sort of how she is and then how, if I were to have any part in creating this character, how I would be able to bounce off of her and stuff. But yeah. It's, like, it's, yeah. yeah it's, always, it's always fun hearing her go from Brienne to Donna and back to Brienne. Cause like, Brienne is a very like she's not she's not as foul mouthed as Kim is. Um, I don't think anybody is. I mean, I strive to be. She is my heroine. Um, but Brienne does have a mouth on her, and then she'll switch to Donna, and oh, it's so sweet, yeah. yeah. And it's just like this Midwest accent is so adorable. And then she switches yeah. back to Brienne. She's like, ah, fuck this. <laughs> I'm just like, I love you so much. She's just the best. Yeah. We uh, <laughs> if you if for the diehards out there, like these of. The first episode I was in Plush, um, I had come with this similar accent, so we both talked the same way. And uh, and then <laughs> we talk about monster trucks and snow cones. Um, no, and uh, and uh, the so the first scene where I actually had like a, a strung together sentence, like it's all shot out of sequence. And then director comes over like, what are you, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just. And like he kind of like he's from here, so I just figured that he's like, no, we'll just just keep it like standard American. Like, oh, so she. No. But I, I was like, I no, but like she's kind of got it, so I just figured that we would both sort of talk. He's like, no, no, like I mean, oh, you, okay. You guys are you guys are sheriffs in the Dakotas, like yeah. Got, yeah so you're so, you're a born and bred Dakotan, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, real good. Um. So, so, so we, uh, so we shot that and, um, uh, and so the rest of it, I don't really have an accent. And then, but I'm like, when I got brought back on the show, um, and I, you could probably look up the director, but I guess he didn't come back after that season huh? for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know why. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that Jensen and Jared have, at, at some point had some like say over like w- which directors they want back. Like oh, yeah. I'm sure there's been directors over the time, but like, yeah, that guy's not coming back. Um, um, 
there's been a few that the fandom wishes they would just stop. Right, exactly. <laughs> Direct, yeah. Directors and writers, but we're not going to yeah. talk about that. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so, so that. So, but then, so the so the next uh, breakdown was directed by um, by the, by a different director, and yeah. he was cool with bringing. I was like, yeah, like I I think Doug talks like this, and uh, he's like, yeah, no, sure, yeah, makes sense. And then I'm, I just, it was one of those things. I'd also become a bit more confident as an actor. I'm like. I know maybe it's not like that consistent, but I'm gonna do it anyways because I think it's better. And then I ended up putting that in. So breakdown, I have like far more of an accent, and I also like it. Also adds to more moments, like the way that I added. Like a, a good example is when we were sitting in Baby, me and Jensen, and he's like, uh, he says something along the lines like, "You're like you're Doug. You're you're a good guy. Um, you you you'd never." you're always going to look out for Donna, right? And I said, and I changed the line from, I, I might have said this in the book. I changed the line from like, of course, to you betcha. Because that's. Which that's is, it's, 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 what Doug, it's what Doug would say. Yeah, which is what, not only what he said, but it's, but it's like, that sentence is also what, what Donna says, which is also what only people from that part of the country sort of speak like that. And oh, it yeah. means more when you say that and it like just bonds us together that much more because that's how we both talk. I know, so, and then you had to break up with her at the end of the episode. I'm still crying about it. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. I, know. Um, I, I, have, I, have, I have opinions on that. but I mean, I, I mean, I still think that there was time to write you into the last few episodes to like come back and save Donna or something. I don't know what's happening in season 15 because I haven't watched it yet because I'm just going to binge it all the way through. Um, yeah. And just like just sit in my room and cry because yeah. It's, yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And then to have it sort of delayed by by COVID, COVID. like I guess the last two episodes, I think. Yeah. yeah, they did the last two episodes. Uh, I the last taping day I think was like two weeks ago, and like everyone was just like my entire Twitter feed was just like blowing up with people like posting their their visits to set and like their time on set and I was like please stop doing this you're breaking my heart but now yeah. it's just gonna you know everybody's just gonna end up doing a a, a, a trip down to Austin and just stake yeah. out at Family Brewing Company yeah, have you yeah. been have you been down there I have not no I've yet to go, I'd love to go. you yeah. you definitely should they've got a food not, truck not there now. that is yeah i'm not going anytime soon oh no <laughs> but uh eventually yeah yeah i mean to be fair wait until <laughs> wait until november like everybody else is to see what the hell's gonna happen to our country so yeah exactly they keep uh extending the border closure so and i mean that's uh, that's smart on your part because oh yeah yeah um yeah i mean it uh i'd love to go i'd love to I mean, the beer is really good. I mean, Canada has some great beers. Not even joking. Like some really, really good beers. But um, but on top of that, you were also part of another sci-fi show that I absolutely love, um, The Magicians. Mm -hmm. And like, I did not know that you were going to be in The Magicians. Mm -hmm. And then they're in the library wandering around, and Penny like runs into you, and I'm like, wait a minute! I was like, Brandon, yeah. like I know that yeah. guy. What was what was it like going from like one world of sci-fi like to another? Well, for one, uh, that my return. So I'm I was also in a couple episodes of that, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of seasons apart. And at the time, I was I got like the best call ever. I got brought back on three different shows uh, within a matter of a week or two. One of them being Supernatural, one of them being Magicians, and one of them being a show called The Arrangement. Um, and all of them, I like, uh, you know, Supernatural, I had a mustache. The arrangement, I had scruff and magicians, I was clean shaven. And they were not in an order that made sense. <laughs> of course. So, so what ended up happening is I had, what did happen? I was able to shoot um, with the mustache and then I had a shave for magicians. And then they tried to put on like, it, like a fake beard and it was too late like you can make good fake beards if you have money and time which they didn't no. so it looked it looked like pubic hair it looked like uh crotch <laughs> it. 
Just one of those, they, like, just don't zoom in too close. Just yeah, and they stuff. tried, it and they're like, it's not gonna be good. And then I, they clearly were not gonna keep it on me. And then they took me to set to just show the producers, like, this is the option. And like instantly, like, no, so like, take, ah, take it off. <laughs> so, but then, by so yeah, it's good. I don't have like a crotch on my face, but um, I mean, you know, I, mean, crazy. I think the show didn't really fit the tone of the show. Fair enough. It's, different show um <laughs> but but what was weird about it is that this a couple episodes apart it was episode it wasn't season for that show like the next episode in the next episode you see this kind of, i was kind of like a minor supporting character who's like shaman now and like in the, the world of storytelling and film like those kind of things whenever you do that or change hair or whatever like it's a, it's you're gonna think it's a story point yeah because like what why did he do so it's like why did this is that the same guy? Like, why did he shave his beard? Is that part of the script? Like, why did I miss something in the story? When, like, it's just because I didn't have it because I was shooting something else. <laughs> kind of funny. Like, I'm no, sure I, just, I just shaved. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. But, like, in normal life, that's fine. Oh, yeah, I can have a beard and tomorrow I yeah. can shave. But on a TV show, it just does something about, like, especially a supporting character, you'd be like, is, is there something about that that I should know? I still think that they should have let the boys keep their beards for the last two episodes because those COVID beards were just epic. I, had a, I have COVID hair right now. It's getting it's getting long, but it was it was about weird. that long, I think, when we met. Which yeah. uh, which if if you want to go by numbers, hold on, I actually have it. Boom! That was us the night we met. Huh. That's hilarious. That was that was sweaty grossness after I want to see the concert. Yeah. Was it the concert that we snuck you in for? Because you showed yeah, up at yeah. the convention and we were like, oh yeah, you're totally getting in, right? And you're like, I don't, I don't know. We're like, come, we'll take you to Stephanie. Yeah. And we were like, we're like, we have one of your kids. <laughs> She's like, yeah. oh, we'll take him backstage. And you're like, what? Okay. We're like, just just go. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. No, it was, yeah, it was the uh I mean I I hadn't uh yeah been brought to the convention but brianna was part of it so she got me in the first night there for karaoke whatever and then the next Even night it was free <laughs> yeah and then and the next then, night uh, yeah and then the next night, yeah i was like you guys were both like hey coming back i'm like oh, i didn't you're like i don't have a ticket we're like you don't need you yeah. don't need a ticket like yeah, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about and then you got to go backstage and hang out with jensen and jared and Play yeah, Jensen's guitar, and you know it's fine. Not jealous. Yeah, <laughs> good. We all we, that was the year that uh, Prince passed away, and so it was. That's right, because yeah. the the city before we were in Minneapolis, and they mm. closed out the concert with Purple Rain, um, yeah. and it was just so magnificent. Like everybody had those like, like nobody organizes like the fucking Supernatural family guys. Mm. Like I don't know if you know this. But we could probably cure cancer if one of the boys got infected. Like, I'm not joking. Like, if one of the boys came down and, like, came out and was like, I have cancer, we're like, we're on it. We got this. Like, two days max, we'll have a <laughs> cure. Um, but, like, they organized a whole bunch of, like, candles that, like, burned purple because of prints and, like, handed them yeah. out before the concert. And then at the end, everybody, like, turned them on. It's, like, the concert's such a magical time. And that was also, I think, the year that uh, Rob first sang uh the song that he had wrote written for his mom and like i was directly in eyeline like her, her and her, his brother were like two or three rows behind me across mm -hmm. the aisle in minneapolis and like it looked like he was singing to me and i'm like this is too much i can't deal with this emotion but pretty, yeah but i was I, do you probably i i wouldn't know who, but the uh the guitarist for um who was playing that concert billy uh, was it yeah he was doing i was like literally standing down here and he's doing the guitar solo in, in purple rain like right there i'm like it was yeah it was wild billy was, is just like every single one of those guys in loud and swing are just like obnoxiously talented yeah. and i do i do miss um oh my god why am i blanking who played crowley he's king of uh, the nerds yeah and i mean i'm about hit hit, hit me yeah. up in the chat guys uh, he he would play drums um, mm -hmm. along with Stephen Norton. And so you'd have like Stephen on his riser with one set of drums and then like, uh, why am I blanking on his name? 
um, he would be on his other on the other set of drums, and it would just be like the most synchronized. Like it was it was more beautiful than watching synchronized swimming. Watching synchronized drumming is just excellent. Um, yeah. Did you go? And then we ended up getting we we dragged you out the next night, I think, to like the meet and greet. Yeah, at, at uh, Storm Crow. Oh yeah. Uh, where he, that was th was this your first weekend of like introduction to the fandom? It was, yeah. And did we scare the crap out of you? It was intense. It was intense. <laughs> it was good. It was. Uh, <clears throat> it was very good. It was. Uh, there were some people I remember at the convention who thought, who, like, crossed over and went, thought that I was like Brianna's actual partner. <laughs> people coming up to me and like, congratulations! I'm like, no, no, that's acting. That's and there's and like Brianna's parents were there. Yeah, and like, right. up and, and uh, like I don't, I met them once. It's, it's like she, she is married with two kids to a man who is Hispanic, I believe. Yes. Is he Brazilian? He's uh, Mexican. He's beautiful, is yeah. what he is, and their and children one, are just disgustingly yeah. attractive. Yeah. Uh, just one, I think, just one. Da Valentina, her daughter. Yeah. Oh, I thought they had two for some reason. Anyway, my brain. Yeah. I can't keep track of everybody's kids. Yeah. No. Because everybody keeps popping them out left and right. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was yeah. a fun weekend and we kept in touch and really fun. I appreciate you dragging me out and stuff. It was uh Oh yeah, I don't take no for an answer. <laughs> like yeah. we did we did get to do something that I've always wanted to do and it well, I mean it was very akin to in my mind uh after the concert uh and we were Kelsey and I were taking uh pictures with you and then we're like we should go grab a grab a beer or something and then you got bum rushed because people recognized yeah. you. And we yeah. literally had like, it, I felt like I was one of like the security guards for the Beatles. And I was like, guys, okay, we're leaving, we're leaving. And like dragging yeah. them out with their hand. And like, I'm like, don't make eye contact. Just walk up the street, just keep walking. Don't make eye contact. Don't talk to them. Don't say hi, just keep walking. And then we ended up at a bar and like yeah. waited for people to leave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's funny. Did, yeah. It, it's rare. It's, Happened on a. I don't know if it's supposed to happen more, but it, it has. I don't get like pulled over all that much, but every once in a while, like I'll have someone. Oh, Doug! Like, oh, like are you talking to, me? <laughs> and talking to me? Or and then, yeah, and then they'll point. Hey, it's, it's you, Doug. Whatever. I'm like, okay, some fans. But maybe it might be a different story if I like was in the states or certain cities. Or maybe there's also I mean more. To be fair, you were at a supernatural convention. That too. That so, like, those are your people. And thank you, Chris Taylor. It was Mark Shepard. Mark Shepard. Thank you. My brain literally was like, hadn't, haven't been to a convention in like three years, which is weird. Yeah. Cause I, I guess VanCon would have been around, isn't it? It's in September, usually, I think. But not. It was in August. I think it, hold August, on. Yeah. I have the date. It was August 26, 2016. So, we met like just over four years ago. Oh, that was four years ago. That's I so fucking weird. Wow. I know, right? Um, so you've been on all these amazing TV shows and you got to work on them and it's really cool. Well, you are a part of an upcoming Netflix series. Is that mm -hmm. right? Firefly Lane? Mm -hmm. I have yeah. no idea what that's about. Can you tell us anything about it? <laughs> yeah, I can't. Well, it's based on a, on a book. Um, so there's a, an author named Kristen Hanna. Um, she's... I think her most popular book is called The Nightingale, um, which okay. I believe is being turned in. I think that's the one that's being turned into a feature with the, the Fanning sisters, Ellen oh, and cool. uh, They're shooting that right now, I think. Um, and then, um, yeah, Kristen Hanna is a pretty, pretty successful uh, author. And um, yeah, Firefly Lane, um, it's based on that. So I play character. Um, so I could brief synopsis of the show. There's two. Actually, so the leads are um, Sarah Chalk and Catherine Heigl. And um, they are, um, they, they, it follows through basically from when they're kids to sort of in the, uh, there's three timelines, the seventies, the eighties and the two thousands. And we jump around the whole time between all the timelines. And then the seventies the is a different cast. It's the younger kids. Um, and then uh, the 80s and the 2000s um, is 
is Catherine Heigl and Sarah Chalk. So I'm in the 80s timeline. And they are, they, they sort of become like, they're like unlikely best friends. Like uh, there's uh, Kate and Tully are the two leads. And, and uh, Tully is, is Catherine Heigl. And she's sort of more like outward confident badass. And like um, Kate is more like meek. Um, but they grow up on this farm town, uh, so the farm and the street is called Firefly Lane. And um, they end up sort of bonding their, their whole lives and end up going into uh, broadcasting together into like TV and everything. And uh, and Tully wants to be like the next Ellen or Oprah kind of thing. And, and then we fast forward to in the 2000s where she does become that, but then she's missed out on other stuff in her life. Kate's had a family and they, it's it's... Women right. going through life and, and uh, putting up with, you know, life stuff, life stuff. Story sounds oddly familiar and relatable for me. Um, <laughs> yeah. But what, it, what what's your role in all of this? Like, so yeah, you're so in the I'm, 80s. I'm in the 80s timeline, which is super rad. I get to wear, like, pretty awesome graphic tees and stuff. Nice. And uh, hence, like, and I have, like, big curly hair. Um, <laughs> I'm, like, the, the the camera guy for the, the small town Tacoma. Tacoma? Yeah. Tacoma, um, Washington, uh, uh, news station. And so I'm, it's, and then, you know, Tully's the reporter and I, I go out and we get in the van and, and actually we took a photo of all of us and like, we look like the Scooby gang. Like we got the blue van and like, I look like Shaggy and like, <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah, there's, it, uh, it's pretty rad. So, um, yeah, so stuff happens in the show and mm -hmm. I, Ended up getting a bigger role than I expected, so um, and I'm in there throughout it, so uh, which is super cool. So that I think it's obviously everything's changed now. Uh, they've been it's complete. It's one of the only shows that's in the can that wow. does nothing from shooting. Uh, they've really just been waiting on uh, finishing the dubbing for. They're dropping it in you know 50 languages or whatever. So Jeez. so yeah, they're waiting. I I keep hearing. Supposed to be like fall and then it was like december or january so i think they're trying to time it properly on netflix where it's going to be kind of the only thing that's out so it'll get a bunch of attention i mean i don't think that there's a lot to battle against let's be honest like there's yeah. there's not a lot of new stuff i mean obviously you don't want to come out you know when the mandalorian is being released because you'll just yeah. be forgotten about but like yeah. january yeah. and february like there's not a lot coming out so yeah and there's no that matches the content like it's sort of dramedy sort of style i mean there's, there's definitely some drama in it there's i i have a comic relief character which is, pretty awesome. which is great <laughs> yeah and i got to like improvise a bunch in the show and i i haven't seen i've only seen a little bit bits of it but it's looking really good i actually we still do regular uh, zoom chats meetups with the cast like we're all still super tight and the writers and the producers um, we're actually doing another one uh, in a couple of weeks, but yeah, which, which is cool. Like, which is kind of rare because you could do a show and everyone moves on. But we've all kind of stayed in touch, and uh, um, we during, especially during the early lockdown, like we we're doing them every once, kind of once a month, and checking in and. Fun. Well, I, I mean, that's why I started the show because I was like, well, I know nobody else has anything to do, so no one can actually say no, they're too busy to yeah. come on the show and talk to me. Because I've literally yeah. just been using it as an excuse to like hang out and drink and chat yeah. and catch up with some friends that I haven't seen in a really long time. And I'm yeah. like, well, what a perfect opportunity for that. And also, like, I have some really fucking cool friends that I want my other people like to know about, like you. So, uh, so what have, what have, it sounds like you've been working a lot during this. COVID time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So have you had any downtime? Like, has it changed or has this like kind of actually kind of like <clears throat> help your career? <laughs> uh, it's it definitely. Well, so yeah. So at the industry shut down in March, April on its own, just, yeah. they just dropped everything. I had, uh, yeah, I had booked a commercial and then that obviously went away. And, um, wait, which commercial? <laughs> oh, I, I, was it the Muse next one? Because that was, oh yeah, no, hilarious. <laughs> no, this was no, it never got shot because it was it just shut down. I, I oh. and these I don't find out what the actual product is until until I kind of get there. So that's um, kind of dangerous, isn't it? Can be, 
It can be a little bit. You're like, oh, like anal wart cream. I didn't know. <laughs> no, I haven't done that. <laughs> well, now that you said it. <laughs> now that I said it, I'm going to get dated with product. But no. Um, yeah. And then, so I did a, I ended up shooting a commercial in lockdown in April in my apartment, um, which for a local bank for actually my, my bank um, here in Vancouver. Um, I had done a campaign with them before, but this audition came across that uh, it was like, yeah, you gotta like, you gotta like have an apartment um, uh, look kind of like shaggy um, be proficient with video stuff and things like that. I'm like, this is like check, a made check, check, check. I, <laughs> yeah, we ended up shooting. It was me and one crew member in my apartment shooting an oh. entire commercial. Um, so I was like cast hair, makeup, wardrobe, <laughs> and set deck, and he was all the technical like camera, grip, electrics. So and, it was like uh, just like back in film school kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah, it, well, it was a, it was a, it was one shot. It was like a lock off. So it's me, it's my face sort of changing through the, the stages of what we're feeling during lockdown of depression and then a little bit of help. And in the background, you see the background changing, like in the days that are going by. And so you can see you know, like at one point it was like a birthday and then like you see some Amazon packages and you see some <laughs> takeout food and, and my clothes are changing constantly. So it was like all my clothes and all my, and I would just like do this with my hair. <laughs> it up and it was nuts and it was like yeah it was that was a huge challenge that i given my background and like what i've done i don't not even like tooting my own horn i don't know who else could have done it no fuck okay. it toot 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 it <laughs> because yeah. i don't because you just needed those skills like you you just needed to like know how a set works and how and like everything I ever kind of learned came together. Like I had, then I had to drop all the technical stuff. Oh yeah, so the director's on Zoom. On the <laughs> I was gonna ask, is he like on those like those like Segway wheels, like with a face? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's on Zoom on my laptop, and then they have an iPhone gripped onto the camera with the cameras on the eyepiece of the main camera. So it, and that's on the Zoom channel, so they can see what the camera's seeing. Oh my god! And then they're like, okay, can you change that? Can you change this? And I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm doing this, I can't do that while I'm but doing like, this. Can I can I put my pants on first? Cause yes, and yeah, it was it was it was nuts, and uh, it was a cool challenge, especially to, to be working. I mean, it sounds like fun. Like it just sounds yeah. like one of those like how like how talented can you be? Like let's let's just let's just list all the ways and like figure that out and like figure out yeah. how you can like you know MacGyver things together and make yeah. it work. But we don't always get the opportunity to like really push ourselves like if in things that we're good at or know what we can do like yes it can be stressful but like it's it definitely makes us better when we get to like push our own abilities and everything like that. Yeah. so that was that was cool well uh, i know yeah like so you you've done all these things but like have you had time to like just like sit down and like watch movies or like binge tv shows that you haven't got the chance to before because you know, you were going yeah. to auditions and working and doing shows yeah. and you know what? Not really. Um, <laughs> I, because I, it went from lockdown to, I had to move out of my apartment. I was evicted from my apartment. Uh, we call it, there's a term that's like, I think Vancouver invented because it happens so much called renovation. Oh yeah. They, they evict in order to renovate. It's not a new yeah. concept. But they, they do that a lot in New York and LA too. Yeah, so, um, yeah, which is totally illegal, at least under, like, DC code or whatever. Long, very long story short, we fought our landlord and um, and won a case against them and stuff. So I, and I ended up, um, right after being kicked out, I ended up uh, buying my first apartment. Wow, look at you. Being locked in, yeah, which is crazy. Um, I never thought that would really happen, especially at this point, especially when no one's really working and all the, everything kind of came together. So I went from like moving out, I put all my stuff in storage. Uh, I moved into a friend's like Airbnb, but she gave me a good deal because no one's traveling. So I got a better deal on it, uh, which was furnished, put all my stuff in like 97% of my shit in storage. 
and stayed in this place, which was actually really nice to like have a break from my possessions of like 10 years. That I've just collected crap and I can't wait to like purge this locker. Oh, um, that's, sorry. That's like my favorite word. Yeah. It's going to be oh, so nice. So, and then I went right into my dad's uh, wife as a realtor and she wasn't busy during lockdown. So she had all this time to help me out. I found a place and then I got it. And then, uh, but it needs to be renovated. So that's what I'm doing right now is renovating. Um, and I'm doing a lot of it myself, um, which, yeah, with sort of the skills and like set tech and stuff. I've learned over the years some stuff, but I'm doing a lot of stuff for the first time and it's taking a long time. Well, that's what so, YouTube is for. So it's fine. You can well, learn. Yeah. That's, YouTube and YouTube and HGTV, you can learn how to build a house. It's fine. Yeah. No, really, like you have to like know your kind of own skill set like for the most part um but really it's just about like it might just take more time but yeah i mean i already have tools and i so i've been installed hardwood flooring and tile and um nice. and wiring and so i'm doing that i have a plumber and electrician doing some stuff but but yeah so that's been taken and it's i'm still working on it so now in fact i was i had actually taken a break from i booked a few things too during this whole time so i'm working auditioning starting to audition again, booking a few things, trying to get my place together, take possession of my place. Move. So, and then now I, I worked on this uh, sort of Hallmark movie uh, last couple weeks ago. And then the director of that one brought me back for this one. So now I'm at a hotel shooting another one. And I had like taken a break from acting from the first time kind of ever told my agent that I've kind of needed some time. Cause like my brain just started to shut down. I was like, flooring and just working on my place and painting and drywalling. And I'm like, it's very, I, it's very cathartic. Just, yeah, it is. It's, it's nice, but it was, I can only do so much. And yeah. I think it just kind of all crashed um, on me. And I'm like, I need to not do anything but this for now. And then I get this call out of the blue for, I, I got sort of offered this part on this movie, which is really awesome. That yeah. Does. I was going to ask about Hallmark movies because I know that they are filmed like on every corner in Vancouver. Um, oh yeah. So is this, a, and also I love them. Like I will watch when I was on tour, if I ended up at a hotel that did not get the Hallmark or the Lifetime channel, I was like vehemently against it. Like I would literally call yeah. the hotels before we would get like three cities away and be like, I'm sorry, I just need to know, do you have Hallmark or Lifetime? <laughs> and they're like, why? And I'm like, because it's December and I need to watch my holiday movies. And they're like, no. And I'm like, great, I'm not staying with you. Find an Airbnb. <laughs> you know what? Like that's, and that's exactly their purpose. Um, I've, you know, we're, we're lucky that they've chosen Vancouver to shoot. They do some in Toronto as well, but Vancouver, they shoot a shit ton. We're talking like 50, like there's like 20 in the, like ready to shoot before the end of the year. They're still shooting. It's insane. And um, I will watch all of them. Yeah, and like they're all kind of this. We all get it. We know they're the same plot. Like it's and, and but they're wholesome, they're entertaining. It's hopeful, uh, yeah. and that's what we need right now. Like whether and, whether it's like relationship wise or just like hope in general. Like that's what we just we need to see something go right for someone. That's all exactly. we need to see. Yeah, and especially no, yeah, it's, it, and it, and if entertainment is an escape, um then like this is kind of the purest kind of escape. And, and the best part for actors is that it's a really, first of all, to work as an actor, um, you know, uh, to get these roles, like everyone wants to work, but also it, it, it adds to our resumes and we can push that and do other other stuff. But also in watching them, like, I, I love seeing them because I'll, I'll see like, oh, it's my buddy, this or my friend. And, like I see my friends all the time on Hallmark stuff because like, they're all shot here and like, and I get to watch them, but like, and, but as, as, as the audience, like you get introduced to new actors like because yeah. they, they use a lot of the same ones for the leads usually, but most of the supporting actors are probably people you haven't seen yet. And that's, those are the movies that actors who are trying to get into it. Like those are the first roles they get. So, yeah. um, and you might be seeing or discovering like the next star when you see these. Um, but even, and even if not, you're seeing like actors be, good like yeah. who you might never heard of and like they're still good and like maybe you might be inspired by one and follow their career or, you know yeah i do i do love every now and then uh 
like a few like an actor or an actress or something from one of these movies will like pop up in like a like a big movie and you're like why do i know that face and then you go on imdb and you're like oh they were in my heart belongs in san francisco like i love that movie like right. i don't even know if, I, if that's not a movie it probably will be soon um yeah, that's a really good title you should pitch that yeah but but like I, I I love how every Christmas time uh someone will release like they made a like a, a a gif of like a woman who is a and like there's like nine different uh uh like occupations goes yeah. home to a and like totally. rural town like whatever and it's just like you just like you can literally be like okay that combination makes that mm -hmm. movie and that combination makes that movie and that it's like it's so formulaic but it works and it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, well, they've kind of hit something that, that works. And I, there is now a push um, and pressure on those types of movies and companies to, to make them more inclusive though. Um, I'm so excited and, for that. Yeah, which let's all hope that that goes that way because it has been Caucasian people. Like, are they the only ones with love stories? Like, no, like, can we not have I mean, I'm I'm more I'm more of like just show me two sweet little boys fall in love at Christmas. Like show me yeah. that. Show me show me two girls battling their parents to fall in love at, at St. Valentine's Day. Like just show it to me. Like because yeah. also that like gives more of like the friends that I toured with like a chance to be in those movies because like mm -hmm. they are going to be able to act that role like authentically. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, and it and it comes from pressure, you know, from like that, you know, it's traditional that some of these companies are kind of conservative, the actual people who run them. Um, and and they have the audience that they're geared towards is also conservative. Um, but ultimately the world's changing and people have to kind of open up a bit more to that. And it, and that's when it starts to change and like they start having more inclusive casting, which I'm all for that, obviously. Yeah. Now the last the last movie that you just filmed the the Hallmark movie and this movie that you're currently doing are those mm -hmm. Christmas movies or Valentine's Day? Uh, no, they're not. So they will be probably like springtime releases. Are they murder mysteries? Oh, they're not. No, but I did. Uh, I actually worked with the same director. The first time I worked with him, it was uh, it actually released in January of this year, and it ended up being called. It was for Lifetime, and ended up you can look it up. It's called Babe. Not even kidding. It's called Baby Monitor Murders. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, and I, so not, so I found out that the title of it a week before it started airing, like there's no pre, and it was originally called The Babysitter. Um, and I play the killer in it. Um, <gasps> Spoiler. Want, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Um, <laughs> you can find that it's on like, but it was, um, but I was like, that's, Title you're choosing, and and the reason why, is because uh, the, the the girl who plays the lead, uh, Natalie, she's uh, uh, babysitting a girl. She's not even a baby, uh, but they use a baby monitor. Um, as this, the little girl's like seven or whatever. But meanwhile, she's at home, and then she hears like she thinks she hears like a man's voice on the baby monitor. Like that's the creepy thing. And she goes in the room, and like there's no man there. It's like, but and that's it's literally like one scene. <laughs> I don't know the movie. What are you talking about? It's insane. So why, anyways? And it's also. <laughs> is anyone? Are you like really keen to watch a movie called like Are the Baby Monitors Being Murdered? Or I mean, I would probably get stoned and watch that and enjoy it profusely. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's a good little movie. It's just like that's an unfortunate. Title. <laughs> but it was super fun to play a kill. I had my whole like. You know how like bad guys have their whole like giveaway speech at the end and explain their entire oh you're monologuing yeah yeah so <laughs> I, I think fun moments in that so you can go find that and it's fun to play a bad guy like god yeah I, yeah i've done a lot of plays where i've played sort of darker characters and things like that and i'm just waiting waiting to do that in fact this audition i'm doing right now is for a bad guy so nice yeah, because you, you you also do a lot of stage work too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, what's a role that you haven't played on stage that you are dying to, whether it's mm -hmm. musical or just like straight play? Yeah, I mean, and so and and 
R.I.P. Theater, unfortunately. Like, they're <laughs> tell me, hard now. Like, tell me about it. Musical theater, the, like Broadway, isn't Broadway shut down to like 2021? Like At, until like fall 2021. Oh man, I feel yeah. so bad. That's, yeah. Oh. And we're not uh, getting any help from our government because they suck. It's fine. Guys, vote. Yeah. <laughs> and like theaters need to be packed full. Like, they need to be full, just like with restaurants. Like. Well, I mean, my idea for right now is like people are so starved for entertainment. The arts, people who work in the arts are so starved for work. Mm. The Broadway shows in New like the Broadway theaters in New York have all of the sets and costumes. Fuck it. Just like get the cast and crew together, you know, test everybody, make sure everything's fine. Do like a week of rehearsals again, get everybody back in shape and then just film them for like Broadway HD or put them out for free. Like make it, make that something that like the government supports to like help everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's not <laughs> hard. <laughs> yeah. I can, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm sure they'll start to think, about that, I mean, for one, I mean, theater is meant to be seen live, but that is what they do. That they film for broadcast, yeah. so that's still a thing. Um, yeah, I, I would hope so. Yeah, but for roles, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of the best, the most fun roles I've had have been on stage. And is there anything that I'm dying to play on stage? I mean, I'd love to do. I've never done a full Shakespeare play, um, but I would. I, I. I've trained in, in Shakespeare and done a bunch of scenes and stuff when I've been training. Uh, but to do like a, a full play would be super fun. Would like, you want something more comedic or like, uh, would you want like Othello or like uh, Midsummer Night's Dream? Like Richard the Third would be super fun. That's All cool. right. He was an evil, evil guy. Very, And he just like at the end just backs himself in the corner and fucks everything up. And, dies lonely and no one cares it's, it's great but he like manipulates his way to the top kind of thing so you just want to be a, an american politician got it uh. yeah, so that, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh yeah no that's we're already seeing that play out so maybe wait on that yeah but you do grow a nice beard and that's like required for like shakespeare actors so like i could totally then, see yeah. that happening so, yeah keep it, keep it going i don't know i just i I, I haven't seen you play a bad guy yet because like it's just like you're you're just so sweet and wonderful and just lovely and like seeing you be like an asshole I think would just like break my heart a little bit and be like that's not Brandon. Yeah, what well, is the, <laughs> the 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 baby monitor murders one? I can't even say it. <laughs> um, it sounds like it could almost be a porn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, but I I play but I play the the trusted local uh, small town uh, psychiatrist mm. like, who's like trying to help them, and then really I'm I'm like an incel who's like like yeah it's brutal, and then I like steal like a woman and her child, and like you're my family now, I'm like we're gonna love each other, I'm like not quite, but wow, but that it's that kind of creepy and wonderful it's that kind of like creepy weird stuff so it's like the trusted nice guy so I like you flip the nice guy thing on, on the, head. the typical nice guys yeah well when you are when you are fixing up your house i'm assuming that you're just blasting music because why mm -hmm. not so what are you what do you what have you been listening to while you've been fixing up your new place uh, a lot of podcasts but um yeah podcasts are helpful to get through like I need like laughing is helpful to get through this time. So a lot of uh, I know that's not a music question, but um uh yeah, a lot of like like Conan O'Brien needs a friend is is a good one. I like Conan O'Brien. I realized that his humor is like really like he was an original writer for like the 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 golden era of the Simpsons. He's yeah. the, his sense of humor is sort of on point with mine. Um but yeah, music I, I listen I mix it up between like I'll have like uh, sometimes I'll just put on like meditation music. It's actually quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like some meditative piano and like um, so, like waves and just like classical piano playing over it. And yeah, yeah. So then, like, I fall asleep I, to that every night. I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah, no. I was like, I it's like I don't need people talking. I don't want like music like bang hit me over the head. I just need it. To 
music. So that's been nice. Uh, but I listen to a lot of my, what I do is like rap and hip hop. A lot of just, I just sort of find the latest sort of the newest sort of stuff and, and pick through it. Although lately I haven't been like, I feel like it's, it's probably just me getting older, but <laughs> the music, like you get cranky about music. Oh, I mean, I toured with musicians for 10 years. Like I'm, I'm so ornery and crotchety about music these days. I'm like, no, yeah. this isn't music. Uh, but I did go through like an old school, like hip hop rap phase from like the late nineties, early two thousands. And just mm -hmm. like, it kind of healed my soul a little bit. Totally. Yeah. I was like, put on, I'll find like a 2010s or like two thousands hip hop greatest hits. And like, Oh yeah, here we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Throw some Biggie on there. Oh, totally. Yeah. Some Biggie, some Tupac, some. Yeah. I mean, Common. Some, yeah. Um, Mason. Puff, oh. he, did he? Mace. Yeah. Jesus. Mace. Yeah. There's a name I haven't heard in ages. 50 Cent. Early 50 Cent album's pretty good. Later stuff, not at all. Snoop no. before, before he became best friends with Martha Stewart. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's just weird. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of that got me through it. I just driving up here though. Um, it's about five hour drive from Vancouver to Columbia, so oh wow, good, good opportunity to um, listen to a bunch of stuff. And I was compelled to listen to uh, the first uh, Tenacious D album. I just because it's so good. <laughs> It's so good. It's and then like I hadn't listened to it. It was like enough time had passed that I like I was obsessed with it. I know like every song, but I, I hadn't just hadn't thought about it. I'm like I'm gonna put that on and then just singing along the whole time. I, I remember when that album first came out, and I I just remember every like local band covering "Fuck Her Gently," mm -hmm. and like not well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. That's classic song. Like, classic. The song is amazing. The the music video is way better than it should be which is a little upsetting yeah that oh it's so good i saw a tenacious d in concert in vancouver and they did at the at the peony and uh yeah they closed with fucker gently and, and having an entire crowd singing fucker gently so oh yeah there's nothing like there's nothing like singing that song in a crowd of people at the end of a concert with just your arms around strangers and people swaying drunk and like trying to drink their beer. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fuck you <laughs> yeah. gently. Uh, oh, it's just, it's so much fun. And like you start serenading people you don't know. And it's like, yeah, everybody leaves in the best mood. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. yeah, it was good. That was, that was good. And then I went to the first, uh, uh, the first album by Flight of the Concords as well. It's, uh, it's just so such a God, I miss that so much by traveling. It's one of those, like, you know, you, you have to sacrifice for something that you want to do. And so, like, all the years that I spent touring, like, I was mm -hmm. only seeing that one show or that one band that I was out with. And, like, people were like, oh, you got to go. It was must be so cool. I'm like, yeah, but you got to go see Metallica and Tenacious D and Weird Al and like all these pink and all these fucking amazing tours. And I was sitting in a shithole bar in yeah. St. Paul, Minnesota, freezing my nuts off. And like, yeah. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Touring so, so special. Uh, yeah. So are you, so you're five hours away from Vancouver. Is it cold there? No, uh, at night it is now, but Kelowna, the interior of BC is known like it's usually the hottest. I think it's it could be the hottest place in BC during the summer. And we're kind of like, we have that like last summer now, but during the day, I don't, oh, I don't know what Fahrenheit is. It's like 20, it's been like 21 degrees Celsius. So. Okay, so it's like 70 something. Yeah. Year. Right. Yeah, and it's Which, like clear skies. Actually, it was overcast today, but it's been, and when the sun's out, it's like, pretty hot yeah i mean it's it's been getting up to like i'm, I'm still in la and it's like a hundred fahrenheit which is like 30 celsius yeah. i think well and then plus the fires oh it's so sad yeah no the entire state of california is on fire and um we are not um getting any help and it's not slowing yeah. down and also the santa Ana winds in la haven't started kicking up yet so 
um, we get that to look forward to as well. And we've been getting all of the smoke. So. Yeah. yeah. I, have you seen all like the Twitter responses to like uh, uh, mor moronic Americans that like show the maps for where the fires are in the U S and people are like, Oh, there's no fires in Canada. And it's like, no, you idiot. It's a yeah. map for the U S there are fires in Canada. Like, it's not like, yeah. It's not like the borderline is an instant like fire extinguisher. Like it's not yeah. how this works. Yeah. We definitely lucked out. We didn't get fires nearly as bad this year. Um, yeah. Usually in the interior. I mean, we have a lot of forests to burn, but it kind of was a uh, winter so, summer less hot than normal, which it's kind of scary. Cause I thought it would be, Oh, here I am like smoke, smoky summer forever. Like because of, global warming so here we are that's but, just a uh, mess yeah no it's not a yeah, to earth. total mess yeah the earth is flat too so yeah there's people living at the center of it even though it's flat they're still the center it's fine and the moon is made of cheese fuck it at this point let's just believe everything yeah what's the worst that can happen yeah actually i, I take that back where's wood i yeah. completely take that back yeah let's hope it doesn't get any worse so with, with Halloween, with today being the first day of Halloween, <laughs> uh, real quick, because I know you gotta I know you gotta head out soon. Um, uh, what are your favorite scary movies to watch in general? And like do you have any specifically that you save for October and Halloween? Um I think I'm not I I'm not I guess I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to really scary movies. I That's think. fair. Uh, I like, I prefer movies that are like more disturbing than like jump scare style, like uh midsummer, for example. Gotcha. That kind of, I'll Fucked up. that. Yeah. Where it's just like, <laughs> oh, I just feel, yeah. Versus <laughs> like, eh. you're uh, like, I need a hug and a bourbon yeah. and just exactly. don't stop hugging me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, like, yeah, I did like the first paranormal activity. That was that was more again more disturbing. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. Like the part where she gets up in the middle of the night and just stares at him in bed, mm -hmm. and, and gets back into bed, and then like. And so then you like the up. you like the creep factor versus yeah. like the gore. Yeah, I mean the gore. Okay. Is, yeah, it, it doesn't ever really doesn't scare me as much but uh yeah i like and and just like costume i like some like ghostbusters which has like nostalgic sort of sentiment i know i literally have a i, I created because i'm crazy and i love excel more than most people um mm -hmm. i've created a spreadsheet and i have them in four different categories i have horror thriller comedy kid family and then the sagas so like mm -hmm. The Nun, the Annabelle, and the Conjuring movies are all better, which if you haven't seen those, fucking amazing. Uh, like the Insidious and like all the Nightmares and the Jasons and the Friday, like mm -hmm. Friday the 13th and Night of the Living Dead and stuff like that. But I've mm -hmm. discovered a few gems. And if you haven't seen it, I think you might really like it because it's like comedy horror, but it's not yeah. Halloween themed. It's actually Christmas based oh, yeah. and it's Krampus. Oh. Have you ever seen it? I've not. It is some fucked up shit. It is so good. <laughs> okay. Looking it's basically about. it's basically like how uh Krampus is like uh like Santa's evil like counterpoint. And like hmm. instead of giving you gifts, he like drags you to hell kind of. Oh. Um point. it's really good. It's it's very much based in like heels. Um, like where actual like the, the myth for Santa Claus came about, like that was what it was built on uh, Saint Nicholas, and then Krampus is like for the bad kids. They're like, no, you don't get coal. You get hauled off in a sack and beat with sticks. Mm -hmm. Like that's what bad kids get. Um, <laughs> and it's really good. And like uh, Adam Scott is in it. And he plays like the dad of this family that's being like. It, nice. It's really fun. I'm actually yeah. like I watched it for the first time last year and. Uh, I'm really angry with my friends who knew about it and didn't like force it upon me. 
because yeah. I don't I don't like horror films. Like I don't like getting scared. I will literally watch them like this and like cover my mm -hmm. face and like plug my ears. I I don't like them. Um, yeah. But uh, but this movie is so much fun. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's good. I did. I auditioned for uh, the Child's Play remake that they shot up here. Which did you see is, that? I didn't see it yet. No, but is it, is it good? Creepy as fuck. Is it? Yeah, it is. Plus, Mark yeah. Hamill plays the voice of Chucky, so it's right. Yeah, kind of I uh, yeah, I, I played like I auditioned for. I didn't obviously get it, but uh, yeah, Aubrey Plaza's in it. She plays the mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some friends who were in it, but uh, that that was a fun kind of twist on it because it was like smart. A smart toy, like an Alexa type thing. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah. yeah, the opening scene of the movie starts off with like the ad for the Chucky doll mm -hmm. or for the Buddy doll, um, which is creepy because when the original movie came out, about like three years later, they came out with the My Buddy doll. Do you remember that? I don't. I don't know. It had the same fucking outfit as the Chucky doll. Creepy. Marketed towards kids, had dark brown hair instead of like the, the creepy ginger color. Um, mm -hmm. And it, there was my buddy and kid sister. And it literally was an ad that was basically like telling you how, uh, how uh, the buddy doll is like this controller and can, can like help you control your TV and everything in your house. It was very much like Alexa, but it was a doll that your kids played with and had a video camera in its forehead. And, so many issues and like just as the commercial keeps going it like doesn't stop and you're just like every time he opens his mouth it's like it gets creepier and creepier and creepier funny yeah and yeah really? no it's it's fucked up <laughs> there was a, a, yeah, a really young actress i worked with uh she's i think she's like eight at the time and right? she's one of those sort of old soul um just different young girls who doesn't like all the same stuff and really good little actress and um she showed up i was in an audition room like going over something and she showed up and she had like a chucky doll and as if a chucky doll was her like doll she was like hey like hey and she's holding like petting like stroking the creepy greasy hair of this like, no doll. She's like hey what's your work <laughs> like <laughs> it's just so disturbing you she start just carrying you start carrying salt packets in your pocket because you learned <laughs> that from supernatural <laughs> i would have <laughs> Yeah, exactly. She, uh, yeah, it was just it's so funny. I remember, she's just lovingly stroking the hair on this Chucky doll, as if it's just a normal doll. No, that's a cry for therapy. Is yeah. what that is. That is, you get that. And her mom is like, oh, she likes the Chucky she likes doll. It. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I was ever that creepy. Mom, chime in in the chat if I was ever that creepy. I don't think I was ever that creepy, but. uh what was what was the movie that you watched like as a child that just like scared the crap out of you? Because we all have that one that we've seen like we either accidentally saw it way too young or like an older sibling or it was like at a sleepover <laughs> or something. And yeah, the uh, the one that sticks out for me is I have like a vivid memory of it, and I just mentioned it was is the first Ghostbusters, and I okay. remember it was my first house. It was before we renovated it and the couch was in a certain way because i remember having to jump behind the couch and when this came on it was and it was the opening scene in the library right where where they go down and then the lab then the ghost is there and it goes wow to the screen and i remember just this is the first time i would ever seen something like that and i have this like i just remember having that image like burned into my head of like that first because it was pretty creepy like it was pretty like at that point you don't know what that movie's gonna be yet and yeah you don't know what a jump scare is yeah you don't yeah you just don't know what that's something you learn the hard way yeah yeah but yeah but at the same time that whole scene is set up so that you you know something bad is gonna happen it's yeah it's not just gonna be a normal ghost thing and then she goes like turns into the monster and i remember oh. like i was probably six or seven when i first saw that just like freaked out yeah <laughs> It's so sad. Yeah, I always talk about how powerful uh, music is in movies and like what a big part it plays in it. Because like, if you're just watching a movie, like 
Like, I think uh, A Quiet Place is the only movie that, like, has no music in it that just, it's it it's better off without it. Because, like, otherwise you have, like, the strings of, like, tension and, like, mm. you know, everything builds and, like, you know something's coming. But then, you know, if you replace it with, you know, the Friends theme song, it, like, takes you out of it. Like, it, it yeah. doesn't matter what's going on in the movie and you know what the theme is. Like, it yeah. the music takes you out of that moment. Uh, yeah. Like when they recut, uh, somebody recut the uh, a trailer for Mary Poppins and put in really fucking creepy mu music, yeah. and they called it Scary Mary. Yeah, and you're like, Julie Andrews yeah. should not be watching these children. Yeah, they, they did that with uh, Mrs. Doubtfire as well. Oh yeah, that was a really good one. Yeah, yeah, I, th um, I think I yeah. think the movie that first destroyed me was uh, Gremlins. Mm -hmm. I was eight and I watched it at a church function. Mm. they like threw all the kids into a conference room with like you know the the, t the massive tv on like the rolling cart and a vcr yeah. and they're like yeah. you guys can all go watch movies like here's a bunch of vhs's and lock them in the room and turn on grandma's traumatized yeah. yeah and I, they were like voting they were like taking votes and like all the older kids voted for gremlins and i'm like i don't want to watch this they're like well you don't get to leave the room so yeah. <laughs> i was like i don't want to do this like i'll go in the church and pray it's fine I was like yeah. eight. <laughs> well, my mom chimes in and says, Peter Lore in the hand. Scary at 10, still don't like to hear his voice. Mm. I don't think you've ever shown me the hand. I remember watching uh, Salem's Lot with my mom and her like having a blanket at her chin the entire time to like cover her face when she was scared. And I was like 12 or 13, just sitting there being like, this is so weak. She's yeah. like, are you scared? I'm like, no. She's like, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. I'm like, well, you raised me. Uh, yeah. I think like th that's the thing with scary movies is they are designed like that and you know everything around it, like the sound design, the music, everything is like, it's, it's to manipulate you into thinking a certain way and then they flip it on you. Like, yeah. I think that's part of it versus like movies that are kind of more psychologically disturbing are scarier to me than like, of course I'm going to be jump scared if it's set up that way. Like if I'm really invested in it, and I'm gonna like freak out just like anyone else would because I'm paying attention. Well, it's like with Supernatural, like they have mon like there's monsters, like scary monsters on there every week. Yeah. But the most disturbing episode they ever had was the one with the family that used to kidnap humans and hunt them and kill them. There was no the, the monster in it were humans, and it was mm. the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. And I was just like. I don't like this episode. It makes me feel things. I don't want to go to like the backwoods of Kentucky anymore. Like this is really creepy. And yeah. it's like, there were no, I, I think the only special effects were like blood pouches, like squibs. Mm -hmm. And I think that was it. Like there was no, like nobody morphed into a zombie or a shapeshifter or a vampire or a werewolf. Like it was just humans being creepy and cruel and fucked up and that i think is the most terrifying like any movie like i think that those are the most disturbing movies like the strangers mm. just two people showing up at a cabin door and killing people because they opened the door yeah that's fucking scary yeah like or get out you know like, and people dude white people are fucked up what is yeah. going on with it like seriously leave the black people alone just yeah. stop, stop, stop forcing our your brains into their bodies. Just let's, let's stop doing that. But Jordan Peele does a really good job of creeping people out. Because did you you saw us? I'm assuming. Uh, I haven't seen us yet. I've just, I just yeah, I've just seen. Yeah, if you like the creep factor, you will definitely yeah. love us. Because it's Jordan yeah. Peele's like, it's it's still like the feeling of Get Out, but like. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it also takes place in Santa Cruz, which is like over the hill from my mom's place and like where I grew up. So like they're like, oh yeah, we're on the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. I'm like, I know that. I I that's that's the beach I went to growing up. Yeah. Although they yeah. do make a, a fun uh they do make a, a little comment in the very beginning. They're like, Oh yeah, they're shooting some movie down down the boardwalk, and it's they're referencing um uh not the boys. Um oh my god, what was the vampire movie that took place? In Santa Clarita. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Why am I, guys? Sorry, my brain is not working. I've been studying yeah. far too much. Um, 
The Lost Boys. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because they filmed on the boardwalk, like on mm -hmm. Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Like it's supposed to be the same year that they're doing uh, us. And I'm like, oh, that's 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 a cute nod. Like that's really funny. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, guys. If you have yeah. any questions, please throw them into the streamlabs uh, above. Brandon's. We'll be talking for like another few minutes, and then I'll ask my last question because I know he's got to go and like film a. A great thing and he's been great about like just hanging out uh and i love this but if you have any questions put those in you have five minutes uh and then i'll ask my last question but uh what what was your favorite halloween costume you ever dressed up in oh um i'm trying to think i had i've had some some good ones uh yeah last week last year i was uh Specifically, season three Hopper from Stranger Things. Um, I wonder, I, oh, the Magnum PI Hopper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's I remember that costume. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I got the official shirt and everything. Um, I came across a photo. I I play. I did Anton Chigurh from No Country for Old Men, and I like bought like a like a black wig. And like did the creepy like part. And it's got like a weird creepy hair. It's like plastered down. Yeah, and I I even built the little uh the cow killing machine. Oh my god. Of, like, I bought all right, I, I was working on set so I had access to like a bunch you know, I made it out of like an old chrome fire extinguisher and like a hose and like a button. And I would just walk around with because he's got it's like a pressurized tank, right? And you put yeah. it in a juice like a thing. So I just like walked around with that and not many people, it was pretty esoteric and not many people got that. But still, it was fun. Yeah, I know that I've had some more good ones. Yeah. What Thank about you. as a kid? Like what was your favorite like pre-pubescent <laughs> costume when you still used to go like trick or treat? Um, so my favorite um, uh, Marvel character, uh, I, was really, I was really into comics growing up. Um, and I actually this still is, have this is a safe place. You don't have to say growing up. Like it, you, you can still be into them. I'm still. <laughs> I, I mean, mean obviously, I'm look behind me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm. I, I. I still am into them. I guess. I. But the sort of collecting uh, phase of it sort of went through. But I was obsessed with Gambit from X Men. Nice. And he's like, and I think it started with the X Men Adventures, the cartoon, which was like a revolutionary cartoon. Like that was like one of the best cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons of the night. I remember being obsessed with X Men before that, and they came out with that, and to like hear the voices of these characters was really rad. And the actor, I, whoever played Gamut, like he had this really like thick Cajun accent, and they had the, he had this love affair with Rogue and they could never be together and he was like a badass. And so I made like the full Gambit costume. I remember when I was younger, that was pretty sweet. And so again, pretty and adorable. no one's going to know what that is. <laughs> like, yes. Oh no, no, no. I, I guarantee you the yeah. people watching know who Gambit is and it says, yeah. no, not, not in this, but in back then, like when I'm a teenager. Oh, oh yeah. No idea what I was, but, and it's Gambit's like one of the only characters they've never really, I think Taylor Kitsch played him in one of the X, the Wolverine movies, and yeah. it was terrible, and it was like half-ass. Yeah. And well, I, uh, I, Channing Tatum wanted to play him yeah. so badly, like he was like petitioning and yeah. like wanted to produce it, and he was like, "I'll put my own money up for this." Like, I really want to play Gambit, and like it just kind of like. Like every every like three years or so, like it pops yeah. up and like they're like, oh well, maybe, and it's like no, like stop teasing me with this. Like either do it or don't. Like, yeah, it's been one of those movies that they've talked about forever. I don't think Channing Tatum. I was, I wasn't really pleased with that choice. I like I respect him for wanting to do it, but he's just not right for. It's got to be. I just see him being like someone who's far sharper, like far. I don't know. There's something about him that's like a bit like, you know, like wittier and like just kind of hard, more hard edge than Channing Tatum's got okay. like a, a beefiness about him, like a broiness about yeah, him. Yeah, but if you watch Magic Mike, you know the man can move. So there's yeah. no lack of smoothness in that man. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, I didn't, you know, you can move. So, yeah. Now I'm thinking about it moving. Great. <laughs> I mean, that's my every day. So you're welcome. Uh, yeah. There are there are worse people to to have in your mind dancing like yeah. that. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Would you, you ever? I would much rather have someone who can move than not. I, I don't like watching. I'm not like I'm not a fan of Dancing with the Stars. Sorry, for oh, yeah. but I can't. And the reason is I don't like watching half-assed stuff. Like the point of that show is to like, how good can these non-dancers dance? And like, they can't. I, I'd sooner watch like So You Think You Can Dance, which is like oh. people who are the best of the best who can who are competing. And so like I can connect to that, but watching someone who's like shitty, washed up, like Q-list actor. Yeah. I don't I don't want to watch a, a, a linebacker that's had five knee surgeries and exactly. like 17 concussions try and do the mamba like I just I don't yeah. I would much rather watch like the 20 of my friends that have auditioned and made it to so you think you can dance battle yeah. it out and do these moving and beautiful like yeah, numbers exactly. that you know will literally make you cry uh, yeah. because they're so good which is, I think, why I watched. Uh, I loved. Uh, Do you ever watch? Did you watch uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist last uh, I season? Seen it, but it, it shoots up here, and a lot of people are are. Uh, I have a, a lot of friends. Actually, my friend who's playing my love interest in this movie is just did an audition for, I guess, the next season of Zoe's. So yeah, they're they're. I know they're up there right now, shooting season two, and I'm so excited mm -hmm. because the first season's just it's. It's so beautiful, and I love the concept. Yeah, it's a great. Uh, concept. Yeah. Like it's, and, and you know, it's supposed to take place in San Francisco, but I know that it shoots in Vancouver. So, like every now and then, they'll do an exterior in San Francisco. Yeah. And every now and then, it's very like because I know both cities, I'm like, that's fucking Vancouver. Like, yeah. don't even try. Like, yeah, that's North yeah. Vancouver across the bay. That's not Oakland. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's funny. But it's it's really good. I highly recommend it. It's got it's it's like got that entertainment and the talent and like the heart and it's just a beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. show and it will make you cry like nobody's business yeah. because god yeah. damn it, Steven Weinberg, uh, you write <laughs> a good show. Uh, all right, it looks like we don't. Hold on, I'm gonna check Streamlabs real quick. I don't think anybody sent anything. In. Nope, we're all good. Okay, so I'm gonna let you go and do your thing. But my last question is always. Um, it's from my favorite movie. Uh, it's uh, from Almost Famous. Uh, do you have to be happy to write a love song? Do you have to be sad to write a sad song? What is it that you love about music? What I love about music? Um, I would say the ability to transport back in time. Uh, yeah, certain songs just like fully bring me back to the time where I first heard them. I think that's like the coolest specialist thing that, that it does. Yeah. There's certain, like, just like with that, the, the tenacious D and these other, there's a certain time in my life that when I was listening to those and learning all of it and uh, yeah, it, um, yeah, it takes me back to like a time in my life and, and the place and uh, you get all kind of, comes back and appears around me. All right, well, I have to ask a follow-up question. What's a song that makes you think about like middle school dances? Because there's always that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the, uh, like, All My Life, Casey and JoJo? Oh my God, that's so that old, That's like, that was the one that came on and you gotta go and find someone to dance with. You gotta find the girl. You like hold them. <laughs> Your hands yeah, just the waist too. You sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. you go. You go like this, and I'll go like this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and then I don't, and then just we're off beat, just like middle school. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then you step on your feet, and then yeah. that's all right. I mean, for me, for middle school, I had a lot of. Uh, I was I was uh, head and shoulders taller than everybody. Uh, for the most part, so it was like it wasn't even here; it was like down. Yeah. yeah. So 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I love you and adore you to the depths of me. Uh, if you want to hang out backstage for a hot second, we can chat uh, for a little bit before you got to go film. That'd be great. But everybody, say bye to Brandon. Bye, guys. Adore thank you. you. Bye for me. All right, so real quick, uh, just some real quick uh, stuff. Next week is amazing. I have the one and only Koi Jandrew on at 6.30 Pacific time. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to talk, uh, probably going to go through all of my collection behind me. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, and then tomorrow I have uh, the boys review. We are doing episode seven. We are going to go live at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern uh, Time. And then for the rest of the month, I have Koi and then a friend of mine, Sean Lichtenstein, who is a musician in Boston who has some amazing stories to tell. Then the amazing Sabrina Ramirez. And then we are doing a watch along Halloween special, trying to figure out if we can still do uh, uh, Young Frankenstein uh, just to see if it's still streaming somewhere. Um, if not, we'll figure it out and then we'll make it really fun and family friendly so everybody from the family can join. But other than that, you guys are the best. Join my Patreon. I have three tiers. Uh, we're going to do a, a whole bunch of stuff starting in November, uh, just getting everything lined up. But I love you guys and you are the best and I can't wait. Um, you're just so sweet. I love you. I will see you next week. Bye. Awkward dance.